the dingoes got my baby on august 17 1980 this was one of australia's most talked about missing person cases on august 17 1980 was a day in history with a cry of the dingoes got my baby a two months old baby named azaria chamberlain went missing from a tent in a campground near uluru in the northern territory yun kasi yung pagkakapronounce na doon northern territory basta mabilis siyang pinapronounce or nt northern territory it was a famous cried from a mother lindy chamberlain my god my god the dingoes got my baby nakita niya yung dingo na palabas ng kanilang family tent and she discovered na her baby daughter azaria was not in her bassinet at around 8 p.m this is such a sad case of a baby and her parents. On June 11, 1980, Lindy and Michael Chamberlain welcomed their first daughter. The couple already had two sons, Aiden, who was born in 1973, and Reagan, who was born in 1975. But they desperately wanted a little baby girl and yung dream nila na magkaroon ng little baby girl came true when Azaria Chantel Lauren Chamberlain was born Lindy was born in New Zealand before she moved sa Australia before her second birthday and she married Seventh-day Adventist church pastor Michael Chamberlain and coincidentally Lindy's father was also a pastor and another coincidence Michael was also born in New Zealand it was like a match made in heaven sabi nga Lindy and Michael moved to Tasmania after they got married so in Tasmania medyo nakahiwalay siya doon sa continent kumbaga ng Australia kasi medyo nasa um, bottom part siya because of Michael's work which often required na mag-moved around siya or moved a lot of the country Tasmania is where they had their first son Aiden after noon nag-moved ulit sila Sa Queensland, which is where their second son, Reagan, was born. So the Chamberlains eventually settled in Mount Isa in Queensland. And this is where Azaria was born in 1980. Nine weeks after na maipanganak si Azaria, in the middle of August, the Chamberlains are heading off on their first holiday as a family of five. And it was a road trip and they will be starting in the Northern Territory. On August 13, the Chamberlains were all packed in their bright yellow hatchback na car. It was a classic 1970s car. The family packed. Siyempre, inimpake din nila yung kanilang mga camping equipment. And they head off towards their first stop, which was Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, which is about a 14-hour drive from where they are staying or where they are living 
that's according to Google Maps. And I believe familiar naman kayo sa Uluru because very popular siya sa Australia. Para siyang isang malaking bato, kulay pula. Para siyang bundok, kumbaga, in the middle of Australia. And it took the Chamberlains three days to reach Uluru, arriving to their campsite. Medyo late na silang nakarating on the 16th of August. Ang plano ng pamilya Chamberlain was to stay doon sa campsite for three days before sila mag-drive ulit papunta sa Darwin. Although Darwin is in the same state as Uluru, it will take them about 20 hours. Pero inyo yun, sobrang laki ng Australia kasi same state lang pero 20 hours mo siyang drive, So medyo malayo. So dahil nga gabi nang nakarating yung mga Chamberlains doon sa kanilang campsite, Lindy and Michael just set up their tents and they settled with their kids for the night. This campsite, if I'll be able to find a photo, ilalagay ko sa screen. Itong campsite na kung saan nagstay yung Chamberlains was right next to Uluru as in katabing katabi lang. Hindi naman dikit na dikit. Of course, may pagitan pero sobrang lapit lang nila sa Uluru. The next day, which was the 17th, Aidan, who was now 6, and Reagan, who was 4, go with Michael to climb parts of Uluru, while Lindy and Azaria do a little bit of their own exploring at a place called Fertility Cave. And this is where Lindy first spots some dingoes. And she would later say that she felt na yung mga dingoes na yun was leering at Azaria. Kumbaga parang um, minamanmanan or binabantayan nila si Azaria. And that made Lindy felt incredibly uneasy around the dingoes. Hindi ako sure kung knowledgeable ba yung mga tourists or si Lindy mismo about sa mga dingoes pero ang sabi yung mga dingoes daw are like dogs but wild dogs and they are mostly found in outback locations in Australia and dingoes look just like your average cute friendly neighborhood dog but they are not may mga rules daw na kailangan mong gawin kapag naka-encounter ka ng mga dingoes number one wag na wag mo silang hahawakan number two wag mo silang ipat kumbaga yung hahawakan mo sila sa, sa ulo katulad ng ginagawa natin sa mga aso natin and Number three, ang wag na wag na gagawin daw was to feed them. Because ang sabi ng mga Australians, ng mga experts, if you ignore the dingoes, they will pretty much ignore you. Pero, the moment na pinakain mo sila and baramdaman nila na komportable na sila around humans, that's when a dingo attack can happen. And ang sabi pa, a dingo can kill a human. And if ever na maka-encounter ka daw ng dingo, ang gagawin mo lang ay cross your arms on your chest and start walking backwards and call for help. Parang kasi pag nag-cross ka ng arms, magmumukha ka daw mas malaki kaysa sa dingo pero syempre pag tumayo yung mga dingo malamang parang matangka din sila especially kung petite ka like me malamang lamang mas matangkad sa yung dingo kapag tumayo yun 
So, kailangan mong i-cross yung, yung arms mo on your chest para lang mapakita sa kanila na mas malaki ka. You are authoritative, parang ganyan. And slowly walk backwards, standing tall with your arms crossed. Huwag na huwag ka daw tatakbo and huwag na huwag mo silang tatalikuran or maglalakad ka ng nakatalikod ka sa kanila. Of course, hindi mo alam, baka bigla kang sunggaban, di ba? So, kailangan dahan-dahan patalikod kang maglalakad para nakikita mo kung nasaan sila. Well, wala namang dinggo dito sa atin but you'll never know, di ba? Mali nyo, makapag-travel kayo sa Australia and makakita kayo ng dinggo. Akalain nyo aso, hindi pala, di ba? A few bits of information regarding sa mga dinggos. Ang sabi, Michael Chamberlain had been feeding the dingoes. Michael was feeding them bread crust, which Lindy actually discouraged him from doing, telling him na Michael was only encouraging the dingoes to stick around and maglure nga around them. And she was right. Pero hindi naman niya sinisisi si Michael. But it was a common practice daw na mga tourists or ng mga locals doon na i-feed yung dingoes doon sa campsite. Pero may mga posters na inilagay doon sa campsite discouraging tourists to feed the dingoes. Kasi kapag uh, yung mga dingoes na sanay sila na yung food source nila ay galing sa mga tao and suddenly ititigil mo the dingoes can become even more aggressive. So dapat in the first place hindi na talaga finifeed ng humans yung dingo. Kasi nga pag nasanay sila, di ba? So lagi na silang lalapit and pag lumapit sila ang ine-expect nila, bibigyan sila ng pagkain. And pag wala ka nang ibinigay and suddenly nga sinabi nga doon sa mga poster na please wag niyo na pong i-feed yung mga dingoes. So pwede silang maging aggressive. And in fact, just two months previously before nga nung nangyari kay Azaria, a three-year-old girl had been dragged from her family's car by a dingo. But luckily, her parents quickly saw what happened, so nag-intervene sila. And thankfully, the three-year-old girl was saved. And ang sabi pa, two years previous, the Uluru chief ranger had warned of a possible fatal dingo attack. The chief ranger's name was Derek Roth. Sinabi nga niya yung possibility ng fatal dingo attack pero he was ignored. Allegedly, he was ignored. But it seems like tourists were not really adequately warned of the dangers of dingoes to keep the tourist numbers up and A number of people at the campsite at the time, the Chamberlains were there. May mga tao doon sa campsite noong time na nandun yung mga Chamberlains na sinabi nila na nakita din nila yung mga dingoes na naglulurk around doon sa campsite following people carrying food and just like simply watching them. So it was clearly an issue. And unfortunately, what happened next was a tragic incident. On the evening of the 17th of August, at around 6pm, after a long and exhausting day of exploring, the Chamberlains put their younger son, Reagan, to bed sa loob ng tent. And Michael, Lindy, Aidan, and baby Azaria gathered around a campfire with other families na nagstay doon sa campsite. And yung family, nagluto sila ng barbecue, nagkwentuhan sila, they all got to know each other, 
and they became friendly. And in particular, si Lindy at si Michael, naging close nila yung isa pang couple na nandoon sa campsite with their baby daughter. Yung pangalan ng mag-asawa ay si Greg at si Sally Lowe. Ang sabi ng mag-asawa, describe nila na friendly daw at likable si Michael at saka si Lindy. And just like your average family. At around 8pm, sinabi ni Lindy na it's time to put baby Azaria to bed. So pumunta siya sa tent kung nasaan natutulog na si Reagan and Aiden followed his mom to the tent. Pero, he decided to stay up a little longer because medyo gutom pa yung panganay niya na si Aiden. Baby Azaria was put in her cot and she was wearing a singlet, a nappy, a white jumpsuit, booties, boots I mean, and a yellow jacket. After noon, nakita daw ni Greg, si Lindy, at si Aiden na papunta doon sa kanilang car to get some baked beans. Kasi ang gutom pa si Aiden. After 15 minutes na nailagay na ni Lindy si Azaria, si baby Azaria doon sa tent, Lindy and Aiden returned to the campfire and after noon, Lindy and Michael hear Azaria scream like baby scream umiiyak parang ganun and Sally yung isa sa mga couple na nandoon sa campsite also hears the cries or the scream of baby Azaria and the scream was described as short and sharp wala namang ibang way kasi yung mga baby diba to express kung ano yung gusto nilang gawin kundi umayak lang sila and then the cry suddenly cut off and ito yung iyak ng baby indicating na something was wrong other than gutom sila or basa yung diaper nila so Lindy immediately get up to see what's going on and as she was walking papunta doon sa tent nakita niya may nakita siyang dingo emerging from the tent with one of Michael's shoes in its mouth. Galing yung dingo sa loob ng tent. Hindi ko alam kung bakit iniwan niyang iniwan ni Lindy na bukas yung yung tent or nakalimutan siguro niya or baka the dingo found a way para makapasok doon sa loob ng tent ng mga chamber lane. So yun nga, nakita ni Lindy na palabas itong dinggo daladala yung sapatos ng asawa niya and sabi ni Lindy niwan niyang bukas yung zipper ng tent because sobrang lapit lang naman nung campfire doon sa tent not realizing that there was any danger and she started to sprint towards doon sa tent Kasi nga, nag-aalala siya para sa dalawang anak niya na nandoon sa loob ng tent. Yung kanyang second son na si Reagan and si baby Azaria. So, Lindy goes inside the tent and she began to frantically search for Azaria. Hinila niya yung kumot doon sa cot ni Azaria and Lindy didn't find baby Azaria. Chinek din niya si Reagan and he is okay. And sinabi ni Lindy na nakita din daw ni Reagan yung dingo and he was scared and frozen with fear. So, Reagan decided to play dead parang ganun para hindi na siya lapitan ng dingo kasi nga takot siya. At this point, tumakbo si Lindy papunta sa campsite and doon nga niya sinigaw yung famous line na yon na my god my god a dingo's got my baby and nagtanong siya kung sino sa mga tao doon yung may torch 
and hundreds of people joined the search sa Uluru that night, including yung mga local Aboriginal trackers and the local police. Of course, the police was also informed. And yun nga, um, dumating yung mga police doon and examine yung scene. And Lindy told the police what happened na tinangay nga ng dingo yung kanyang baby. I'm not really sure. Parang wala namang sinabi na as in nakita talaga ni Lindy na tangay-tangay nung dingo yung baby niya. Kasi yung nakita lang naman niya ay isang dingo na lumabas mula dun sa tent at ang dala ay sapatos. So, dahil doon sa pangyayari na yun, inisip ni Lindy na malamang before yung dingo na yun na may dalang sapatos, ay may iba pang dingo na nakapasok sa loob ng tent at kinuha nga si baby Azaria. Because hindi pa naman nakakalakad ang isang 2-month-old na baby, di ba? So, walang way or there's no other way na mawawala doon yung baby. Pwera na lang kung may iba pang tao na kumuha sa kanya. So, in-examine nga ng mga polis yung campsite and may nakita nga yung mga polis na dingo or dog tracks inside and around the tent. And meron ding fair amount of blood and dog hair were also found in the tent. Pero wala namang daw aso talaga doon sa campsite. So, yung nakita na hair was allegedly ay sa dinggo daw talaga nang galing. The aboriginal trackers also made several discoveries. Kasi sinundan nila yung dingo tracks and they found drag marks followed by two separate shallow impressions in the sand. And yung mga imprint daw, it appeared to be that of a knitted garment and a third darker patch of sand. And itong patch na to was thought to be blood. Of course, itong unusual na pangyayari na to na a story of a dingo taking a baby quickly made headlines across Australia. Pero kahit gaano pa ka-extensive yung search na ginawa ng mga pulis, ng mga aboriginal trackers, ng mga tao doon sa campsite, baby Azaria was never located. One week later, on August 24, a tourist from Melbourne was exploring Uluru and he came across a small bloody baby's jumpsuit and he immediately knew na yung jumpsuit na yun ay kay baby Azaria and he contacted the authorities kasi nga syempre sobrang laking balita nga nung ang nangyari kay baby Azaria na kinuha siya ng mga dingo so alam ng mga locals doon alam ng mga turista yung nangyari yung discovery ng jumpsuit ni Baby Azaria was found about 4 kilometers from the campsite. And kasama doon sa jumpsuit ni Azaria ay isang napi and booties. Pero yung jacket na suot ni Azaria, according to Lindy, was never found. Yung kondisyon ng jumpsuit na nakita nung tourist became one of the most talking points of the investigation and of course one of the key pieces of evidence I'll insert a photo of the jumpsuit black and white naman to so hindi ganun ka graphic basically yung jumpsuit daw ay merong allegedly stains of blood around the neck area it was dirty of course and merong tears everywhere not really everywhere basta may mga punit-punit siya may mga sira siya and besides the own the jumpsuit was in good condition considering yung sinasabi na dinrag nga si Azaria maybe doon sa jumpsuit niya 
dinrag siya ng dingo. So, dapat medyo um, malalaki yung wasak nung yun ang ina-expect ng mga police. Na hindi lang ganong maliliit na butas or sira doon sa jumpsuit na suot-suot ni Azaria nung night na yon. Dahil doon, it really confused the investigators and made them question the Chamberlain's story. Kasi nga, kung kinuha ng dingo si Azaria and was eaten, kumbaga, paanong yung jumpsuit ay buo pa din? Actually, buo pa rin siya. May punit lang siya sa leeg and sa ibang parte, pero buo pa rin yung jumpsuit. And we're talking about wild dingoes here. After all, hindi naman mahuhubad ng dingo ng dahan-dahan yung jumpsuit ng baby, di ba? Before sila kumatake. It didn't make sense to a lot of people. So later, babalikan natin yung nangyari sa jumpsuit ni Azaria. So, mag-skip na tayo after several months na ito. Nung nakabalik na yung Chamberlain's sa Mount Isa. May chismis, mga chismosa talaga. A vicious rumors started to swirl in their local community. So may kumalat na chismis about dun sa mag-asawa, hindi lang dun sa local community nila, kung hindi sa media. And the public opinion was split at this time. May mga naniniwala na yung Chamberlain's were innocent victims and may iba naman na naniniwala na yung story about sa dingo was completely made up or gawa-gawa lang. And that's all of the information for part 1. Part 2 will be up on my channel on Monday where we will talk about other rumors about the Chamberlain family the inquests about this case, and the verdict on the Chamberlain's case. So I'll see you in part two. God bless you all.